Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about starting the remodeling of Renko's wheelhouse and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. All right, here we are on the Lazarette. A few things to sort out. Uh, this side fills up with water. Tools fall down there, fall in salt water issues. The boat lists to starboard. I don't know if it's enough water to cause a list or not, but what I'm going to do is add some inspection ports. I'm going to put a couple in here so that I can look in here easily. Uh, trouble is these are separate compartments. You can't have a hole here to let water drain Ow, there's my head, to a low point because this tunnel for the um, prop shaft just blocks it all the way, uh, you know, to about here. So we actually need to be able to pump them individually. So we've got like eight separate compartments and probably more, uh, maybe eight. Maybe I can get those ones to drain to here, I can't remember. But eight separate compartments to pump out unless the water gets so high that it gets to here. And this is the pipe from the old Jabsco. So if this was truly flooding, then um, you can do it from one spot, obviously. It'll come over the ribs. But when you're trying to get small amounts of water out like that, no luck. What I'm thinking, all this mess. Vicky's busy pulling the uh, cupboards out of the cabin. Bless her, um, is this. This is a good bilge pump hose. It has the spiral built into it, but it's actually very smooth on the inside. So I can have it as a suction hose poke it in, suck various compartments dry, um, but without having eight bilge pumps. Obviously it needs to be a self-priming bilge pump like a Jabsco or a, like a Gusher manual pump. So I'll put one of those on the top here, have a hose run below deck. You can put it to whatever compartment you want and use the handle to pump them above, as well as the Jabsco style pump. Anyway, in the meantime, what I'm actually trying to do is find some jigsaws so I can just put these little inspection hatches in. Also means I can drop the suction hose straight down, but once again, only that compartment. While I'm here, um, these tubs have been in the boat since I bought it. They're kind of cool, but they're also not as big as they could be for the space. And I can't afford to waste any space. So I am thinking I'm gonna swap these out for those blue fish bins I have up on deck. I'm going to take this old water tank out because the pump died on it. I've got a new pump and I'm going to put two big water tanks at the back because, you know, we're going to need the water, that's for sure. All right, this is basically full, way too heavy to lift. So I'm actually going to tip it into this compartment see whether it just fills that compartment or whether it flows into this one and whether that one equalizes with that one. That'll help us know where to put our inspection hatch. Uh, then I've just got this little pump wired directly to a fuse board here so we can get it back out. I've just got the hose running overboard. So that compartment is certainly filled. Question is, does it equalize over time? The new water tanks are going right at the back against the transom. It's just gonna make sure they don't interfere with the ram. And I am gonna add autopilot. I'm gonna put a Ray Marine autopilot in this boat. So let's have a look what capacity this ram is. Oh, it's not particularly well done yet, but I did actually put LED lights in, which will help. What do we got here? Something, something. I can't actually read that from this angle, but I'll look at this footage. This is the dodgy hack I did for the water and the fridge power. 
that's just the uh, emergency tiller hole. I have a plan for that. Do that properly very, very soon on the list, the long, long list. Okay, so this water has flowed to this compartment, but not to this one. I'm thinking I'm gonna put the hatch in this compartment because it means I can actually pump those two from it. This one I can get to easily. This one becomes, well, not that you can't put a hose down there, but you know, is what it is. All right, so let's put it in here. Wonder how many tools we'll find that have fallen down there. I really need to do a removable panel there to stop things doing that. I mean, even a little lip would help, but I think a panel would be better as long as it can be lifted, hinged or something maybe. Got to go between the ribs and I think I will go in a fair way this way because obviously you can reach this end quite easily, but you can't reach right up here towards the keel so easily. All right, I'm gonna mark the inside and then just cut about five mil outside the line. All the water that's in the lazarette here is just coming through holes in the deck. So that's a job to do very, very soon as well. Definitely before we go. T minus, four weeks. Thicker board than I remembered. So it's 120 mils of water. Curious to know if that is enough to cause a uh, little bit of a list. Given we've got these LED lights, which are magnetic, we can put them anywhere we want. Uh, I'm going to take these old incandescent lights out and the old wiring that used to power them. And why am I doing this now? Because I need a bit of wire to extend the bilge pump to get the water out that I just poured in the boat. Because all the swarf from cutting the hole has ended up in the water, I'm going to get a rag as a filter and put it on the outlet of the bilge pump. Microplastics like that are not what we need in the River, that's for sure. Yeah, all right. There we go. Out it goes. It's bucketing down, so I've closed the lazarite hatch, but we do have our nice little, uh, LED lights in now. These were Hardcore, I think is the brand. And I've got to say, I kind of like them. You can daisy chain them, they're quite configurable. I need to put an end cap on there. But uh, really, really configurable in the way you, uh, see here we go, this is where my water comes in the lazarette. That's a small one, but I've got a lot of holes to fix. They're usually directly above one of my tool bags. So, must fix, anyway. The reason I'm in here is that I ended up putting four of these inspection hatches in. God, you can see how much water's in there again. That's huge. You know, I bailed that a day ago. So, I can keep an eye on it more readily and I can get access to anything I drop. A fair bit of water in there too. So, we need to stop the leaks and rig up a good way of pumping this water back out. But that's the four of them. This is the uh, wheelhouse at the moment. Got the old cupboard thing out, the wall here that the seat, driver's seat was against. I've also cut the pole for this table out and the drink holder's gone. Stevesy's here. He said I can call him that. Um, so, this is the new cupboard that's going in that I made in Bega with my mate Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia. He is doing a video on this. Actually, I don't remember whether we filmed this bit. It's pretty straightforward, really. But the cooler bit was Steve also made me this, which is a beautiful hardwood bench. These were... Um, you know, recycled timbers from a really old house, you know, sort of essentially a hundred year old house, had in his back garden, just put them through the thicknesser, biscuit joined, sanded, uh, 
linseed oil, but lots of details on making this in his video, so I'll put a link to that when it goes up. What I need to do is I'm going to attach this little bit of, actually this is an old bit of teak that Dad had at his house. He had a few planks there, um, which I'm going to use in little places for trimming. And uh, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is actually put a little bit on the bottom so the carpet comes in under a lip. I think that's just going to, you know, cover the edge nicely and if there's any water on the ground, it'll be against the teak rather than against the plywood if the carpet gets wet because something gets spilled or whatever, you know. I do have to level it though. So, I am... Spirit level's no use. The boat uh, is sitting with a bit of a list at the moment. So obviously square to the wheelhouse wall is what it takes. So I'm gonna need to calculate the difference in height. This is a shelf that's going in that box, so it's roughly the right distance out. Then I will take that thickness, add that height, to it, weld a bit of angle iron on here, and that's what the back edge can rest against. So this is the project, and I really want to power through this one because, you know, as people say, the boat, you know, it's a small boat, and when you're in the middle of a project, there's barely room to move when you're not, and when you are, it just becomes impossible. So I need to get from this to that in as fast as I can. Now it's started to rain. Priority power tools, now you get guitar first. Oh no, oh, this is a pain. Let's put everything in here. Ah, uh, fond memories. They're burn marks from when I was welding the outside of the boat on the hard stand and set fire to the cabin. <sighs> Great days. I'm going to paint the inside of the cupboard with a sort of a gloss white, something easy to uh, keep clean and seal from, you know, leaking whatever this is where we're going to be keeping food but the outside i'm just doing with this uh boiled linseed oil just to seal it this all these surfaces will be completely covered so you won't see them but just gives them a bit of protection and i don't have to wait for it to really dry before i install it which is the main reason i'm going this way this uh linseed oil Boiled linseed oil, Steve talks about it in his video once again, about the chemistry of it being boiled. It also has a few drying agents, so if you get it on there, wipe off the excess, it actually does dry pretty fast. All right, I'm gonna get this little bit of glue off and then we will screw this piece of teak on. Okay, I am going to drill through the teak and then I'm going to let the screw just self tap into the plywood, which will help it pull tight. Here comes some wash. Should have put a life jacket on as well. I'm going to measure this distance, add the thickness of the teak, and then weld our angle iron on here. All right, let's call that 30. 33, 33 mils. That's easy to remember. Isn't that when Jesus died? Or is it when the hobbits come of age? I can't remember. All right, let's call that 22. So, what's that, 55? Given I uh, killed my last inverter trying to weld off it, I am going to move to uh, OC2's wharf and use the power there for the welding. Just going to cut a bit of angle iron that is the same length as the piece of teak for the other side. bit of uh, the Galmet rust converter. Mm -hmm. 
Sun's come out today, so I'm going to go to Renko, but quickly I just need to try and mount a new winch, putting new tracks on these stairs. So I'm just trying to figure out, I laid this concrete a while ago, just making sure that I've got the centre of the drum centred with the stairs, given that's the, you know, what the trolley is going to run on. So, got to do that. Ah, uh, concreted this, I'll move that over as well. Thanks to uh, Daffy's advice. And then this is the cart that used to run on it and I'm redoing the way the wheels work as well. So got to get that happening before I head down to Renko this morning. Okay, I want to get the shelves for this cupboard cut, three shelves all up. Going to get them cut. I want to get it all done today because it's supposed to start raining again tomorrow and for like a week. So let's see if we can push on and get these in and get some paint on. Bit of a big ask, but... We'll try it. Also picked up a sheet of steel. That's gonna be the steel I use to repair all the holes in the back deck as soon as I've done this timber work. So, ready to go. Carl swung by Renko, he's uh, been giving me a hand with lots of things, including that very cool uh, drone shot from last week. Um, but you're saying, yeah, yeah where the cable yeah, this, connects. The sleeve. Uh, yep. Of this just separated, so the cable uh, is still, okay. is still yeah. attached there. Um, that tape doesn't like to come off, does it? No, so I purposely used the gorilla. Good tape, tape yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Ah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. That's... So I was thinking, I wonder whether we could cut it there, but then the sleeve would be shorter, probably. Yeah, that's and it. And it would, uh, it would mean the. Yeah, it's not good. I was like... sort of thinking maybe it'd come out. Uh, so what I would do. Yep. I have cables. Uh, what we need to do is get a part number off one of them because okay, the yeah. part number will have the length encoded in it. Oh, okay. And so it's uh, here remember, we go. It, it's really easy to place the whole cable all the way through. To the, uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not yeah. that hard, but no, but it's uh, so it's fifteen foot cable. Slowly making progress. The forecast for today is showers, but so far so good. All right. Basic frame done, bit of paint on it, just let that dry. This is the front of the cupboard. I'm going to use a hole saw to cut the corners to some openings all the way around it. And then we'll paint up this bit white and I think I'm going to stain this to keep it more natural timber. are in a hurry going somewhere. Okay, just going to scribe these and we'll use the jigsaw to cut the straight sections. All right, next up I'm going to cut the tops out of the barrels, getting ready to put the sinks in. As I'm turning it, uh, on the section closest to the edge. It's kind of hitting here on the inside. It's just the dust extraction port. So I think I'm going to cut that off and see if we can make the turn. I think I might have to drill another hole and take a few bites at it. sink in one in each lots more work to do to get those secured reinforced and whatever but it's one more thing out of my way let's get this thing locked into position and do the bench top for it okay next step is just a prefab bench top got from Bunnings. Nice and easy, but let's just cut it to size. Well, <laughs> managed to get absolutely soaked coming out to the uh, boat to finish filming today. Just bucketed down. That rain that's uh, been forecast has finally arrived. It's stopped now, of course. Now I'm on the boat. But 
it was like almost zero visibility it was so heavy before but good news we're actually still putting almost an amp into the batteries in this weather with the solar we've got the seat is also gone as a part of this remodeling speakers gone my plan is to make a pedestal for this seat vicky insisted she had a comfortable seat if she was going to go all the way up to the barrier reef in this uh little old uh, work boat which is fair enough so i'm going to build a pedestal here out of plywood with storage inside it can't have enough storage uh going to block up that speaker hole and then probably make another one of these oops which needs gluing because that screw snapped off pretend you didn't see that uh make another one of those there so she can put her feet on that and once again more storage the other great thing about these types of storage compartments isn't so much that they're you know you've got more absolute storage it's more that they can be themed so in this case this is a little bit kind of mm, partially kind of emergency stuff you know big cable ties um, you know infrared thermometer these are cool little gizmos that you can poke through a seacock and block the outside of the hull and then change the seacock and then pull it back through while the boat's in the water so you can do a full seacock change without pulling the boat out of the water they're pretty cool got those in a couple of sizes uh, what else is in here? Uh, just a whole lot of these tapered bungs, different sizes, hydraulic oil for the steering, little funnel for the hydraulic oil, self amalgamating tape, basically just the types of things that you might need in a little bit of a hurry should, you know, something go wrong. Puller for the Jabsco impeller. for the stern gland packing, that kind of stuff. The other side here is flares, V-sheets, life jackets, all that kind of stuff. And also on the theme of safety equipment, a viewer from up north in Queensland sent me this. He's a pilot for the search and rescue planes that go looking for you if your EPIRB goes off. And he sent me this bee caller, uh, support your search and rescue, get lost. <laughs> well, that was pretty cool. Thank you for that. Anyway, here is our bench. Actually, let me get my charts out. I am unduly excited about my charts finally having a home. This is a little container I made for them, oh God, 15 years ago maybe. This, this isn't big enough for a chart, but I'm hoping it's gonna be big enough for a folded chart. So here it is in all its glory. A few things to fix up still. Going to get some beading to put across here. The other one had some, and obviously that's damaged the, the wall, so it'll cover my uh, slightly inaccurate cut as well as the old uh, glue etc this i got from aldi's some sort of you know i don't know thingy for the kitchen uh gotta find something similar possibly make something i don't know um build it in and have more storage some of this stuff can go elsewhere but more storage for stuff pens and things uh, then I actually want to have one section that's enclosed and this is where I'm going to put all my uh, charging points. This is um, four USBs and a cigarette lighter socket. So I'd like to kind of have it mounted in. So maybe build something that goes there and then just a bit of quarter round molding elsewhere. Down below, uh, got my charts now. Uh, Nick knacks at the moment, but once all this stuff gets installed, this will probably just be things like laptops and that that you want to lay in and you just got that little lip so it can't fall out. This was going to be predominantly sort of food storage. So we've gone with the sort of basket idea and then I'm just going to need some sort of locking pin so that I can lock them so they don't slide at sea, but they're nice and easy to move once you uh, get where you're going. Uh, so, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. Got a bit of paint on here, but I can sand that off and oil again. It's essentially the same size as what was here, except no sink, no sink hole, no fridge obviously, and previously this was kind of two really deep compartments, so it was very hard to use the space effectively. So now, yeah, navigation, computers and phones and stuff, and food. The barrels, 
out there in the red. Both have their sinks in now, uh, not properly installed, but I'm going to cut the fronts. And you can see what used to be cleaning products down here is going to live inside the barrels and then maybe just some regular non-inflatable life jackets in the other one. That blue box there is one of my water tanks. I have two of those. Should we brave the weather and go outside? <laughs> Such a miserable day. Um, these are the water tanks, uh, one here, one under there. I've got more of these fish bins, I love them. Um, I'm gonna put them all in the lazarette and have them in a place where they kind of lock in. Uh, thank God, that's so much rain. I put that, that fish bin went in yesterday. That's basically this morning's rain. Uh, what I'm looking at, really, really easy to mount these sort of thought ships, but I'm thinking that's gonna give me bad free surface effect. Don't be wrong, they're not huge. I think from a free surface effect point of view, they're better mounted longitudinally. A little bit harder to do, but could be worth it, I think, for the stability of the boat. We'll have a look down the track when that happens. Okay, time to wrap this video up. Uh, just finished a little bit of a live stream. I was uh, getting a bit bored sitting in the workshop, so I thought I'd give that a crack. Don't do it very often, but probably should do it more often. So let's finish cleaning up this bench and then we'll wrap up. The main bit of mess on this bench at the moment is this water pump. It's uh, still working, but definitely had a bit of salt corrosion on it. This is all the exhaust components from this pump. I gave it a little bit of a phosphoric acid treatment to try and get some of the rust stabilized. I'll give it a wire brush, we'll paint it, it will do. It's never gonna look super pretty, but it just has to look good enough and get off my bench. <laughs> That's the main goal. Everything on this motor has been rusting and none of it's marinized at all. But it is what it is. So throttle linkage and then the governor spring. Maybe I needed this on as one unit. So just giving the uh, flywheel a bit of a clean up from the rust so that the uh, sensor for the ignition timing has got half a chance of working. I should have just sent it to Musty. Go on here mate, sort this out. He would have nailed it. Anyway, I think it'll run. Definitely not designed to live on a boat though. All right, we are getting very close to done. A uh, couple of, another job is to uh, sort these washers out after they've been obviously spilt. Might put a couple of little spring washers on too, just so it doesn't back off and give us a vacuum leak. Now, these screws were totally rusted, so I drilled them out. I found these two stainless ones, but I am just going to grind the tips off on the bench grinder, and to that point, a viewer kindly through uh, the Amazon store sent me some uh, new safety glasses, so thank you for that, much appreciated. I'll wear them. I think we are on the home stretch now. All right, I think we're good to go. What have we got? Fuel on. Throttle, half, choke on. Fuel in it. Just gonna put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pump. Don't think it really matters whether it's a centrifugal pump, but maybe the seal between the engine and the pump needs a little bit of lubrication. Uh -huh.
pump certainly needs to be run on fresh water for a while, that's for sure. Those screws for the exhaust aren't big enough to hold properly. I'll find some bigger ones. But if it runs, you can get out of here. Even I wasn't expecting that. That's pretty cool. All right, send it. Yes. I can see my bench again. Why doesn't everything start that easily? That was actually quite amazing. Uh, nothing to do with me, just testament to Honda Motors, I guess. Still raining again today. Uh, it's actually the Sunday after the live feed now. Rain out of steam last night, so I thought I'd finish the uh, water pump today. Uh, Next up, we've got quite a lot of big jobs. I've still got to finish the, the sort of remodeling of the wheelhouse. Uh, I've also got a whole lot of Raymarine gear that I'm installing at the moment. Got the new VHF radio in, the AAS, so those videos will be really soon. Then we're moving on to the radar and some augmented reality cameras, which are really cool. And then also putting autopilot in for the trip up north so we don't spend eight hours on the wheel the whole way up. So lots of work to do there too. I do want to get this uh, Yamaha back together and get that running because, uh, you know, it'd be a shame to throw it away. I gave it all a little bit of a clean up. Uh, gave it a little bit of a uh, tickle over in the dishwasher just to sort of clean bulk of the crud out. Oiled the bores. Got a few rags in there. Found online bearings. Main bearings and the center bearing little dingle ball home that is the right bore for that uh, Yamaha. A little bit of engineer's layout ink and from, where was that, put my glasses on again, the sandpaper ma'am. Uh, various large-ish bits of sandpaper that we can use to, in combination with the ink, to flatten the head using a sheet of glass and a full seal kit for it. So we've pretty much got everything we need to get that running again. Yes, I wouldn't mind throwing brand new rings in as well, but we'll see, you know. The idea was to try and do the cheapest sort of build we can, but I think once you've got an engine apart like that, you're crazy not to put new rings in it. So I'll see if I can find some of those as well. And then we should be able to put that back together. I reckon we can put it back together pretty quickly, to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to take that long. Another part of redoing the wheelhouse is putting this new marine carpet in, same carpet that's on that little uh, footrest uh, storage container. I don't know the first thing about laying carpet, so if anyone's in the area, the sort of, you know, Hornsby to Gosford area, who's uh, good at carpet laying, uh, send me an email. I uh, definitely could use some help with that. All right, well, take care. Uh, if you're in New South Wales, I hope you're surviving the rain. I know there's been some flooding, definitely up north, Port Macquarie, that kind of area. So uh, thinking of you guys. And I will catch you in a week. See ya. What you doing, Eddie? Taking your bone for a swim. <laughs> you dropped it. You took it for a swim and you dropped it. What are you going to do now? Well done. You got it back. You can very pleased with yourself again. That's it. Come on, Eddie, you can do it. And tell me you're going soft in your old age. Come on, Ellie up. Come on, Eddie. Come on. It's like a snorkel. <laughs> yeah, he's got his own snorkel. Come on, Eddie. Give it the beans. Come on. Do it. <laughs>
Here, can we pull you up by your, by your, you, come on, hang on, I'll pull on the bone, you get up. <laughs> You're not trying at all, Ed, come on. Oh, Ed, that's pathetic. <laughs> well done. There you go. I <laughs> don't want that bit now. You've touched it. All right. <laughs> Shall I get the chair? Oh, there we go. 